Welcome to the Jacob Wayne Show. I am your Jacob Wayne, and this is volume one of what I think I'm going to call Eakin One Out. This is Eakin One Out, volume one. And why are we calling it that? Because I almost skipped another week. I'll admit it. I'll be honest with you. I'm pretty damn tired. I got back from that fun Super Bowl vacation. Might even talk about that a bit more in the next episode. This episode is just seems like I would miss delicious details about all that, if there are any to be gone over. And essentially did that trip, had my buddy Corey here. We were going over some Fakoshka uh, drumity drums and bassity basses. And uh, that was fun and it was great. But after a trip home, see family and friends, it was pretty fast paced, have a guest in town for the rest of that week and the weekend, and then started up work on Monday, and just kind of being on my feet all day, like, uh, I, yeah, my head just isn't in totally uh, getting a good podcast out, so what this is, is eking one out, where I just go as long as I can, until I realize, like, Blah, blah, blah. you know my brain's just falling apart and then i stop could be 15 minutes could be 30 minutes who knows maybe i catch a groove goes for an hour i somehow doubt it so i think you understand the concept right now what am i sipping on a beer mosa mm. now Believe it or not, I had never really considered or thought about beer most as much until last week, which, as I was saying, Corey was visiting. So we were hitting up all our favorite uh, little food spots in Fort Collins. And I think I made a post about this on my Instagram, but it was mainly just saying that it's nice to have visitors in town when you go to one of your favorite restaurants because they can kind of suggest something that you never even thought about getting off of the menu. So, excuse me. We went to La Creperie and Bakery in Fort Collins. Then after we had our delicious meal at La Creperie, I usually get the ham and cheese galette with the side of smoked salmon. Uh, we stopped in on the bakery, and I don't have way too much of a sweet tooth, but Corey said, let's get one of these. Uh... Oh, see, this is why this is an eek in and out episode, because my brain's like, Bleh. it was an eclair, a certain type of eclair, another flavoring or type of tiramisu. I didn't even have to pull it up. It popped right back in there, folks. Tiramisu eclair. Never had such a thing. That was quite tasty and delicious. Then the next day we go to Lucille's, which is like a Creole restaurant. And I get my usual thing. It's the eggs poncha train. That's trout grits that are jalapeno and cheesy. A little bit of potatoes. Got a little bit more cheese on there. And then the trout has this baronet sauce on it with uh, some like poached eggs. So you can just cut those and let the yolk get all up in that baronets and grits and it's delicious as we're looking at the menu though Corey once again points out hey check out these beer mosas he almost gets one but we were like yeah no let's make some at home 
So what we did is we got some pink vapor stew from Ska Brewing. Um, Because the beer Mosa at Lucille's was using a sour beer that I forget the name of. But we're like, okay, so pink, pink, ah, man, vapor, pink vapor wave. Right, because there's a band called Pink Fuzz. That's what I'm jumbling in my head right now. And uh, so we went and got some pink vapor stew and some simply orange juice, medium pulp. And made beer mosas. And now I'm a little bit obsessed. This is just simply orange juice with mango, no pulp. I got nothing against pulp, just the one I happen to grab. And a Montucky cold snack. And some of you out there might be like, hey, this is just adding all this sugar and whatnot to, you know, a beer, making it. Worse than it needs to be, according to some people in the way they view diets. But as far as I'm concerned, this makes domestic beer a lot tastier. Just beer in general. I'm not a huge beer guy, believe it or not. More sours and seltzers. And uh, with this, I can kind of have like less alcohol, one beer, sort of, and some orange juice. And honestly, I'm pretty satisfied. Like, I'm like, I don't know if I need to have another drink tonight. So it's kind of, I'm thinking it's going to be a little bit of my my weekday treat. So yeah, a little more sugar maybe, but it makes me drink less in general. It's probably the right thing to do, right? See, that's the silly little games I have to play with my 35-year-old body now. It can't just consume whatever it wants and stay rail thin. You know, still have a gigantic bald head, but stay rail thin. Because uh, believe it or not, folks, like I don't really eat breakfast or lunch much. It's kind of like one meal a day, which I guess, according to some, that's intermittent intermittent fasting. That being said, I do it later than I probably should. And um, yeah, I don't know, like uh, and probably drink more than I should. So that doesn't help. Maybe munch a little bit sometimes, like meal, then a little more munch still. So I guess what I'm getting at here is that I'm still like got this orangutan physique, orangutan, orangutan. And I really don't feel like I do a ton to earn it other than just getting older and my genetics and whatever. So, I don't know. That's always a little game I got to play with my orangutan body. Is, what is it going to take for you to, like, not feel tired and, like, bloated and just, like, bah? I don't know. Seems like the game I'll be playing until the day I die. But speaking of doing weird food things to my body, I'm going to introduce a tiny little hot sauce segment. So here we got some Nukes hot sauce. I have not tried it before. Gonna pop that open. It's a hefty amount. Don't know if you can see. Okay, there you go. Just down the hatch. Smoky. Um, it's pretty subtle at first. Then it gets all, uh, as I said, smoky, chipotle like aftertaste. Kind of has a good swell after a minute. Um, let's see if they have anything to say. Not too many like anecdotes on the bottle, but <clears throat> they are manufactured in Portland, Oregon. Go Ducks, I think. Uh, nukes hot sauce and on Instagram, nukes underscore hot underscore sauce or nukesauce.com. I'm gonna have to have a little more beer mosa to wash that down a little bit. Mm. I will make this jug disappear. Mm. 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 That one kind of worked anyway. With that, 
Um, any other food things? We tried out this new restaurant called Color Colorado Colache. I believe I'm saying that right. It's pretty new to my town I live in. Uh, and I'd never had a colache before, but apparently it's a type of sweet pastry that holds a portion of fruit surrounded by puffy dough. Um, it is, it originated as a semi-sweet pastry from Central Europe, and they've also become popular in parts of the United States, particularly in the state of Texas. The name originates from the Czech uh, Bohemian and originally Old Slavonic word kolo meaning circle or wheel. And uh, yeah, essentially what they started to do here in the U.S. and in Iowa also, um, colaches are often associated with Cedar Rapids and Pocahontas in Iowa, where they were introduced by Czech immigrants in the 1870s. And um, they started to put in other savory elements like... Uh, at this restaurant, for instance, they had pulled pork, sloppy joe, uh, jalapeno sausage, like egg, sausage, cheese, breakfast one. Pretty tasty and delicious. I highly recommend getting a colache if you never had one and affordable. So I'll definitely be going back there. Man. I am fading into my seat and ready to fall asleep as we speak or as I speak. Who knows? We're, we're getting there on the eking it out. Um, I did take a 10 milligram edible. Some of you here thinking might be like, oh, well, see, you're, you're having a beer mosa and an edible. Of course you're sleepy. No, no, I was already sleepy. This kind of behavior is sleepy deliriousness. The edibles barely kicking in. It's a 10 milligram after all. A watered down beer mosa. This is the thing that I don't think people realize is I become substantially more delirious and strange when I'm tired, not when I'm high or drunk. Clearly, I can get to that level drunk, as you may have seen in a past episode or two, but it takes a bit. So this is a lot more of just barely staying awake and trying to catch a third or fourth wind for the evening. So with that, let's get into the last segments of the show and kind of wraps it up. I didn't notice any new musical releases. All I will say, and probably also discuss more with Kellen in the future, is the halftime show for the Super Bowl is pretty great. It was not my favorite. That still belongs to Prince. But it's top three for sure. Might be even number two. And obviously I'm a little bit biased. It really speaks to me and my taste. But it was just a great halftime show. It was great seeing all those artists uh, collaborating. And just kind of creating that sequence of songs. And it was super satisfying. Uh, Cincinnati lost. Of course they did. So, no, I'm kidding. I'm sorry, Bengals. Uh, I wish they had one. Rams win. So, go Stafford, I guess. The quarterback spent a, did his time in Detroit. Leaves first year out of there and gets the Super Bowl. That's pretty cool. So, music though still. I kind of wandered into the Super Bowl talk. Uh, sadly... A musician I don't know very well, Mark Lan Lanigan of Screaming Trees and Queens of the Stone Age, has passed away at 57. Um, like I said, sadly, I don't know him too well, but it looks like he's collaborated with Kurt Cobain, Moby, Nico Case, Isabel Campbell, etc., like a bunch of people. Um, it seems he has passed away at his home in Ireland this morning, and... He's just a obviously beloved singer, songwriter, and author. And if you're a big fan of him, write me in and tell me what I should know about him or what I should check out. What's his best work? Because I am just not aware of this guy. I never listened to too much of Screaming Trees or Queens of the Stone Age. So, yeah, let me know what I should be checking out. 
Uh, no details on how he passed away. The family's asking for respect. So with that, rest in peace. We'll move right along. Uh, movies. Man. That's another one we're going to save for Kellen. I don't have quite the energy to properly break down the movies I saw, but I've been keeping up on the best of picture list. What I can see. I watched Nightmare Alley last night and really only a third of it because I had started it the day before the first one third and holy shit do I love Guillermo Guillermo del Toro for his art but this particular movie is boring as fuck to me and I don't care what the payoff is if it's in two minutes at the end if you have me that bored to wait for two minutes of like ah It ain't worth it to me. So I can break it down more with Kellen if he ends up seeing it, or I can just be more intelligible in the future. But another boring, overly long Best Picture nominee. So I'm still team Dune should win it. I don't think it will, but Dune's pretty long too, but it holds my attention. Whatever that, you know, maybe I'm just a... One of those dudes. I need laser bang bang fun time to keep my attention. I'm always tired doing these beer moses and, you know, 10 milligram edibles. How do you expect me to pay attention for two hours and, you know, 23 minutes, whatever the runtime is? You put laser, laser, boom, boom, bang, bang in there and hold my attention. So, as you can hear, I'm like losing my voice. It's been a long day. Uh, Another movie I have to break down is Moonfall, which is just a glorious piece of shit. And like intimidatingly sad, glorious piece of shit, if that makes sense. Like it's, it's not a glorious, like a good thing. It's like, oh, wow. Fuck. Like humanity's here now. That's how I felt about it. Uh, With that, let's do a quick This Day in History, and we'll get right on out of your hair. You can go listen to some better podcasts this week, probably. Shout out to your mom's house or the Honeydew, Josh Potter Show, Trash Tuesdays. Uh... I like the Always Sunny podcast that's recently started up. There's so much good stuff. No need to just have a one-stop shop at the Jacob Wayne show. Ah, yes. Featured biography is uh, George Washington, President of the United States. Yes. He was born today. In 1732, I'm recording as of February 22nd, and in Westmoreland, Virginia, he passed away, age 67, on December 14th, 1799, in Mount Vernon, Virginia. So he's a Virginia boy, and some say the first president of the United States, so how about that? Yesterday was even uh, President's Day. I wonder if that's why it's aligned like that. I'm not so sure. Also, these uh, are people that are born this day. You got Drew Barrymore. Yes. Steve Irwin. (laughs) Julius Irving. Daddy Chill. uh, Ted Kennedy. China. And Arthur Schopenhauer, German philosopher. Hmm. The featured event as of today is cloning of Dolly. Remember Dolly? I remember Dolly. And if you don't... What the hell is even that? Well, it was the clone sheep, British scientists working under the direction of Ian Wilmot at the Roslyn Institute near Edinburgh announced the birth of Dolly the Sheep, the first clone of, of an adult mammal. That was in 1997. Um, this is interesting. 
with all the Russia Ukraine stuff going on right now that I do not have the mind to speak on. In 2014, Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych, Yanukovych was impeached following widespread po- protests after he abandoned an association agreement with the European Union. He fled the country and was later accused of embezzlement. How about that? Daddy, chill. Uh, during the 1980 Winter Olympics against the backdrop of the Cold War. Hey, more Russia Cold War talk. The U.S. ice hockey team defeated the favored Soviet team in one of the greatest upsets in the history of the Olympic Games. I don't have anything for that one. 1950 American basketball player Julius Irving, who is one of the most colorful and exciting figures in the game during the 1970s and 80s, was born. I already told you that. So it looks like I am running out of stuff. With that, I suppose we'll wrap up this Eakin' It Out Volume 1 episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I desperately tried to. Go get yourself some Newt's hot sauce, try a beer mosa, get a kolache or two, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye! Thank you for listening to The Jacob Wayne Show. If you would like to contact us, please write us at fakoshka at gmail.com. That is F-A-K-O-S-H-K-A at gmail.com. You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, and YouTube. Simply search The Jacob Wayne Show and it should pop right up. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave a review and share this podcast with your friends. Please write us. It helps add content to the show and makes the show even better for you, the listener. Thanks for tuning in.